Chapter 10 Transfer of Thermal Energy This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. Temperature indicates the amount of thermal energy in an object. The higher the temperature, the more thermal energy the object has. Thermal, thermal energy is always transferred from hotter region to colder region. If you want thermal energy to be transferred from colder region to hotter region, we need to provide external energy. So for example, refrigerator and air conditioner. When one object with higher temperature is in thermal contact with another object with lower temperature, the object with higher temperature will lose thermal energy and hence its temperature decreases. The object with lower temperature will gain thermal energy and hence its temperature increases. But both objects will reach the same tem temperature at the end at their and they are said to be in thermal equilibrium. Now, let's look at this diagram. We have a glass of hot water at 80 degrees Celsius. We have another glass of cold water at 20 degrees Celsius. We mix both water together into another glass and we measure the temperature. We can plot a graph of temperature against the time. So the hot water will decrease the temperature from 80 degrees and for the cold water it will increase the temperature start from 20 degrees Celsius and both water will reach a constant temperature which is called thermal equilibrium and both of them will reach new constant temperature. There are three ways to transfer thermal energy, which are conduction, convection, and radiation. We are going to discuss all of them in detail in the next slides. Conduction Conduction is the transfer of thermal energy without any movement of the medium. Let's say this is the particles in solid. We heat this solid in one of the end. When one end of the solid is heated, the particles in that end gain thermal energy, hence vibrate more vigorously about their fixed position. When they vibrate, they collide with neighboring particles, causing neighboring particles to vibrate more vigorously. The energy of the vibrating particles is transferred until all the particles in solid vibrate at the same higher rate. So this is the direction of flow of thermal energy. Solid is the best thermal conductors compared to liquid and gas. Molecules in liquids are further apart compared to solids. Hence, Transfer of thermal energy is slower by conduction. Gas conducts thermal energy the slowest compared to solid and liquid as the gas molecules are even further apart. All conductors are known as insulators. Not all solids are good conductors. They depend on what materials they are built on. Metals are very good conductors because they have a lot of fast-moving free electrons. The electrons transfer thermal energy quickly when they collide with the atoms or molecules in the cooler parts of the metal. Examples of metals which are good conductors copper, iron, aluminium, gold, and silver. Most non-metals are poor conductor of heat because they have very few free electrons. Hence, they are known as good thermal insulators. Examples are wood, rubber, plastic, and most ceramic and glass.
However, there are some nonmetals which are good conductors. For example, graphite, diamond, porcelain, mud, and stone. Common application of conduction. Most cooking utensils are made of metals and nonmetals that are good thermal conductor. On the other hand, the, the handle of cooking utensils are made from insulators such as wood or plastic. Sawdust is used to cover ice blocks as it is a good insulator. It prevents ice blocks from melting too quickly. Air is poor conductor or good insulator. We wear jackets and cover ourselves with blankets during cold weather to trap air around us, hence keep our body warm. Fiberglass, double glazed windows and polystyrene form can trap air, hence they are used as the walls of houses, ice box and refrigerators. Now, let's talk about two important experiments related to conduction. This is a test tube filled with water. At the bottom of the test tube, we have some pieces of ice cubes. We place wire mesh to prevent ice from floating to the surface. Then, we heat the water at the top area. What we can observe is Bubbles is seen. This shows that water starts to boil. However, the ice does not melt. The conclusion that we can make is water is a poor conductor. Hence, ice does not melt even if we heat the water at the top area. Now, let's look at the second experiment to prove how conduction works. We have a piece of iron rod and we have nail A, nail B and nail C. We use wax to attach the nail to the iron rod. Then we heat the iron rod at one end. So what can we observe? Wax at nail A melts first, hence nail A drops first followed by nail B, then nail C. So, this experiment proves that heat is transferred from one end to, of the iron, iron rod to the uh, another end by conduction. Now, let's discuss about convection. Convection is the transfer of thermal energy in a fluid or liquid and gas by the movement of fluid. Let's say this is a pot. It is filled with water. We heat the pot at the bottom. The bottom of the pot becomes hot when it is heated. The heat is then transferred into the bottom of the water by conduction. When the temperature of the water increases, it expands. When the water expands, its volume increases, hence its density decreases. The hot water at the bottom rises to the top and the colder water at the top sinks. So you can see the hot water increases and the cold water sinks. The cold, cold water at the bottom is heated and becomes hot, hence it, it rises to the top. The hotter water at the top is cool, and it becomes cold, hence it sinks to the bottom. This process repeats and creates a circulation of water due to the difference in liquid. This circulation is called convection current. Remember, convection only occurs in fluids, which are liquid and gas. The molecules in solids can only vibrate at fixed position due to strong intermolecular forces of attraction. They cannot move freely. 
Common application of convection currents are the freezer compartment of a refrigerator is placed at the top so that cold air sinks and hot air rises. This creates convection current circulating inside the refrigerator to cool it, its content uniformly. Air conditioner is installed at the top of the room has the similar concept with refrigerator. Heating pipe for colder weather is installed at the bottom of the room. Conversion current also creates sea breeze during daytime and land breeze during nighttime at the seaside. So let's look at this refrigerator. And this is the basic structure, the freezer, cools down the air and the cold air sinks. When it reaches the bottom, it gets hot and rises back to the freezer and it is cold again and sink. So this is a house. We install air conditioner at the top of the room so that it blows out cold air and sinks to the bottom of the room and it is heated by the hot air at the bottom and rises and go back to the air conditioner to be cooled down again. And this creates the convection current. Similarly, we have heating pipe installed at the bottom of the room. So this is the actual image for heating pipe. It has a similar concept. It heats the cold air at the surrounding, hence the, heat, the, the air is heated and rises. So when it reaches to the top, it is cold and sinks back to the bottom and gets heated by the heating pipe again. So this creates convection current and warm up the room. Now, let's talk about the third way of thermal, trans thermal energy transfer which is radiation. All objects emit heat radiation. Most of the heat radiated by objects at room temperature is in the form of infrared radiation. Radiation does not require a medium to transfer energy. This makes it possible to transfer heat through vacuum. The hotter the object, the greater the amount of heat radiated. When an object absorbs radiation, its temperature rises. The rate of absorption and emission of radiation is affected by a few factors. The first is color. Dark surfaces absorb and emit radiation better than bright surfaces. Second, the texture. Dull surfaces absorb and emit radiation better than shiny surfaces. Third, temperature. Surfaces with higher temperature have higher rate of emission of radiation. Surface area. Objects with large surface area have higher rate of energy transfer by radiation. In most cases, objects which are good emitters of radiation are also good absorbers. Application of radiation. First, we have solar cooker. Solar cooker has shiny surface as reflector to reflect the heat into the pot. Black and dull surface of the pot is to absorb radiation. Second, aluminum foil. Do you realize that there are two surfaces for aluminum foil? We have the dull side, which should face outside to absorb heat faster. And we have the shiny side, which should face inside in contact to food to reduce heat loss by radiation. So make sure you use the aluminum foil correctly. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. 
Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it. Alternatively, you can also enroll this full revision course at Udemy. At Udemy, you can track your learning more effectively. Download my notes in printable PDF form. Take a summative quiz at the end of each chapter. Get your first-hand updated contents from me. Get quicker response from me and many more. You can get all these benefits at a very affordable price. It is one-time payment, no recurring fees, no hidden costs. This saves you thousands of dollars on expensive tuition fees and revision crash courses. And most importantly, your precious time. Finally, you can do your revision anytime you like, anywhere you prefer. All is available within your fingertips. Check out the description below this video and click on the enrollment link to register the course at discounted price. Alright, until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.